Well hi everyone, welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. Um, I'm here at uh, the Nays end of Walton um, to paint uh, the Nays Tower. Um, not sure of the history but I know it's been there many many years and uh, uh, it's a commission for a client. Uh, one or two little things that I need to put in but basically um, quite a simple subject on the face of it but nothing's ever simple so don't go off with the, f the idea that a simple subject is easy to paint so um, I'm going to walk up now to find a viewpoint and um, lead you through the basic uh, principles of how I'm going to paint this lovely old tower here on the coast just north of Walton in Essex in the UK. Actually the Nays Tower is well worth a visit. Um, it is actually open today but um, won't be going uh, up there because of um, I've got to do a painting but uh, there it is. Okay let's see if I can find a nice viewpoint. There's a lovely tower. Hmm, nice subject. Right, I'm going to walk down this way. Right, we need to go this way uh, and head towards the cliffs really because we need to be sitting on the cliffs to um, be able to uh, get the view that the client would like. Well this sort of view is probably um, quite a desirable view really. Got a bit of the cliffs and uh, we do need the water in it that's the key to this one. Well here I am I'm all set up um, I think I've got the composition. Um, I think this sort of suits what the client uh, asked for. Um, it's quite windy here on the coast, which you possibly would expect. Um, and uh, sorry if you do get any wobbling of the uh, camera um, while I'm shooting. But um, uh, anyway, that's the subject. I'll show you the setup and um, I'll lead you through the basic uh, drawing and painting, really. Well here is the setup. I've got my uh, palette out with the uh, brushes, water hanging there nicely, um, nice sheet of, um, 11, of 15 by 22 watercolour paper and uh, there is the tower in front of me. Okay, well I think I've got that all in shot. So the first thing I need to do is to get the drawing down. Um, I know roughly what I want. I want the tower there. So that's um, coming in that, that sort of position. Making it a reasonable size. I don't want it to be too small. Uh, let's start it there. There we are. That's about the height, I think make it reasonably high um, and a rounded top because we're looking up to it because it is a rounded tower although it's got sections good well I've started by drawing a, an outline of the tower itself Just gonna try and hold the board down I've got to watch the width of this because I've got to try and pick up the character of the tower um, which is very important. I've made it a little bit wide there I have to just remove that shortly because I want to get the feel of the height of it. I don't want it to be dumpy because it is quite a tall tower. I haven't read the full details of it but um, that's it. That's lovely. I've got that just about right, I think. Okay. Then we have where the tower sits on the ground. It actually just sprays out a touch there like that. 
and we'll bring the ground across there and it runs out this way there are some buildings there then it drops down into a cliff edge all right and that then tucks back then it tucks back to about there then it heads off this way and to another cliff edge and that we can see a little more of and that's the top of the cliff edge there heading off like that remember perspective as always I always remember perspective and then we have lovely grasses and what have you here now the water the actual water height or where the horizon is on the water is somewhere around there we have to just watch that's pretty straight there you go perfect we can't actually see the um, Clacton Pier but we can see the sections now there's one section there all oh, right okay and that goes up across and down and one section here goes up just not as much I'm thinking about perspective you see because we are looking up to the tower the tower is going to sit on the ground there uh, maybe I will put an extension on that now uh, maybe that doesn't quite get, do do it justice that's it make it a little bit higher you can always make it higher and of course then we have buttress areas so at some point it was obviously used for some form of defense um, in its day haven't really had time to catch up on the history but it's all there to be seen and then there is just a small little top to that it looks a bit like a storage area but it isn't and a flagpole with the flag that's flapping in a rather breezy wind there we go look at that they're gonna be fantastic absolute superb right now we have some uh, hedging and undergrowth there I'm not going to put the new center in there's a there's a coffee shop and center there um, there is some buildings here and I would say that they would have been here in its day so I'm putting those in and there's a bit of undergrowth around that another one there just things going on now there's a couple of figures required in this subject and then there's some undergrowth there that more or less heads out to the cliffs but coming up above that is a building that sits there and just see a little bit of the corner of that one and then top of that I might as well put it in they look as if they've been here quite a number of years um, so they're fairly recognizable um, give a bit of depth a bit of distance and that is pretty much all that's required for the drawing just going to put in some sections down there but we're getting there okay well the first thing I'm going to do is to damp the paper completely from top down around the uh, tower around the white what will be white um, flag and down to the lower area and the water now that water needs to be dead straight well I've previously damped it so I think that's damp enough nice and damp now the colors I'm gonna have the Sun coming from the left in this instance I think or should I have it coming from the right now that's a quandary that I haven't worked out yet anyway 
Um, I'm going to have the sun coming from the left. Right, okay, I've made my mind up. So in goes, ooh, in goes some red. Well, that's a lot of red. Look at that. That's absolutely tremendous amount of red. Lovely. Are we worried? Not really. Because it's an early morning scene. That's a theory anyway. You can only go by theories. The practice of it all is, um, is a different thing altogether. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up some yellow and go into that with a bit of yellow because I want to turn that orange so I'm more or less mixing that on the paper which is sometimes a good thing to do and that red needs to be put along the horizon line as well there we go, look at that just remove that from the water now we can go in with the blue and the blue is going to be cobalt blue so a nice cobalt blue and I'm leaving patches unpainted to denote clouds and I'm also going to do some lifting off as well so that's going to be so it's an early morning scene there we go and see the way it's running down in soft edges and as we go into that sort of light area you get a sense that the sun is coming from that direction now I'm going to use uh, Windsor blue now in the lower part and in parts of the sky above just got to watch that that I just need to lift away otherwise that's going to run down there we are just dry the brush and lift away don't want that entering the water the, the, or the lower part there that's perfect yep now I'm going to use ultramarine just to ring the changes in places ultramarine blue in certain parts anyway I want to make this sky too interesting because it is about the tower but of course when you get this sort of um, whatever you do to the left do to the right when you get this sort of image then it's obvious that you need because it's such a simple subject you need to give it interest and there's only one way to do that and that's create atmosphere within the sky I'm going to put some red in the sky this side too give a nice feeling of warm clouds there we are one there and a little more red and some blue for some cloud work here and these clouds are going to be somewhat smaller so they go away into the distance and along the sort of lower part of the sky just to give it atmosphere it's a sunny sunny scene a bit more blue in that Okay. Brilliant. I like that. That seems to work. Very soft sort of sky, pale sky. A little bit darker edged there. Two little touches of clouds. There we are. Right, now I'm going to lift off in places to create cloud work. Just got to watch that this doesn't run. So I'm lifting away with a it's lightly damped brush that's lifting off colour. There we are. Right, cleaning the brush. And all I'm going to do is to dry the brush off and lift away some cloud work. There we go. Clean brush again. And I'm lifting away cloud work that because I want those soft cloud shapes there we are 
and I'm going to lift away an area there to just to create that illusion of clouds just that one's just behind that area and I'm going to have a cloud above there like that needs to go right up to there. I always keep the tops of your clouds a different sort of shape to the uh, the lower part. Tops of the clouds are normally quite rounded and shaped. The lower parts are quite flat. Right, see the way I'm lifting away there? And you can do this with Bockingford or any rag, any um, wood pulp papers really. Perfect. Now I'm going to put in some shadow work under the clouds. Let's just lift away a little bit here too. There we are. There. To give us a sense of a cloud. And that one there. Just a touch anyway. A little bit there. Perfect. Yep. Now I'm going to put in just before it dries, and it's drying fairly quickly, I'm going to put in ultramarine and light red to create a grey. Not too um, cool grey. And this will be... See how I'm dropping that in to create the undersides of the clouds? And it's still damp. And once you do that, you can really begin to see a feeling of a bit too dark that. Don't make it too heavy. There we are. The undersides of these clouds. And also parts within. Look at that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. That seems to be working quite well. Just begin to dry there, so create another level of cloud work. Look at that lovely crispness that uh, we've got there. Another little crisp area there. See the top is still damp, but the lower part is drying, which is absolutely perfect. Bit of cloud work there bit of cloud work there really creating a dramatic sky and one or two little wispy areas there there some smaller ones in the lower area just like that and obviously the clouds in the lower area are considerably smaller in the clouds at the, at the top of the sky. And you get to a point where you feel you're best to leave it alone really. Because if you're not careful, you overdo it. Now while that sky is drying, I'm going to add some touches of colour to the um, to the ground just to get a feeling of some sort of tone on the ground and it's been a very very dry summer here in uh, Essex and the wind has really dried the, uh, the grass here on the coast so it's really raw sienna you know basically like that. Raw sienna goes across like that. Just goes out to sea. So we'll get that basically down. Now when you get into the foreground, you've got to be a bit rougher because that brings the foreground forward. Then we get more sort of greens introducing a bit of green in there because after all 
it was green at one day at some point here we are that's nice a lot of texture on this bit here but other than that I'm going to let that uh, dry off and I'm going to put in um, I'm going to allow that to dry I think just before I do I'm putting in some burnt umber with a touch of red because there's some lovely sort of sad grasses stand up in that area so I'll put that in a bit of raw sienna going in as well with that there we go because there's sort of like an area here that is not trimmed not ever been cut and there's another area that runs out here that's never been cut so I might as well show that and that helps with the perspective and pulling the eye in towards the picture the focal point which is of course the tower a bit of light red going in there too I like the idea of a bit of light red there a bit of light red with raw sienna because this is what this area is all about quite textured quite rough now uh, there's lots of spiky areas here well I'm going to use a smaller brush eventually but I'm showing those and um, just to give an impression as first off sort of washes and this is all you're doing you're just laying on first washes Now I think it's dry, just testing that, hopefully it is. Or dry enough to put in the tower anyway, because I'd like to get that in. Now the sunlit side is light red with a touch of raw sienna. And that's going to be quite weak initially. And although it's rounded, there are sides. Um, what would there be six sides, I would have thought, the looks of it. Um, but I want to get a little bit of that sort of sense of sunlight hitting the I'd have to use the mill stick for this I think get the sunlight hitting this left hand side so notice how I'm putting in a nice red probably needs to be a little stronger than that with a little burnt umber so it's light red with a little burnt umber and I'm trying to make that lighter then the um, the sky so it's not going to be silhouetted now as I go around the corner I'm adding more burnt umber to that this will darken it and I will paint over the windows there we are so that comes down like that leaving the sections in between I'll fill those in later then we add more burnt umber more light red with a little blue to indicate the shadow side which is like that now I'm not saying this is the final colour but it certainly gives us an idea of the shape of the tower. It'll have to be done to be finished shortly. But that's that. Just going to touch in some little touches along the bottom. There like that, just to give a just while it's still a little damp just to allow that to to run up mill stick is very handy particularly when you're working outside with a wind blowing Yeah, I'll put that edge down later in shadow. Now, also, I'm going to add a little raw sienna to that. A little, 
bit more blue. Cobalt blue, useful. Yeah. Yeah. Cobalt blue seems to be. Add a bit more blue than that. Because this is going to be look distance. So it's got to have quite a bit of blue. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this building here. Like that. Cross like that. Always make your buildings blue in the distance if they're of no real importance. And these are only a sort of like a it's the roof line really. Goes like that and it comes like that. I think that's probably it. Let's just put a surround to that building. A little bit there. And there is, let's go really blue now and quite weak. A bit more blue because these are these are buildings in the far distance. It's not even, just needs less colour than that. Quite weak chimney, roof area. Um, it's also a chimney there and a bit of roof work. One or two little things going on in the background. Now while that's drying, I'm going to put the water in. Starting off with virtually Windsor Blue really. Running across, trying to hold a decent line along the horizon because that must be pretty much straight really. Comes down like that, right. Pull that through. And this almost all winds are blue on that one so just try and get a decent straight line across there like that then as it comes forward i'm going to introduce a bit of red into that the red of the sky and that will darken it slightly and create a feeling that that The sky is sending a colour just slightly reflected in the water. Got to be darker all round. And that comes down the edge of that cliff there. Let's just take that right up again to the horizon line. There we are, lovely. So that's the quite dark in this lower area. Heads around there, heads off around that cliff that comes down and quite spiky there. Leave that just to blend with that. Perfect, so that's the water in. Right, I'm using a very old brush now and I'm putting in burnt umber with Windsor Blue. And I'm trying to create that sense of dark hedging that's going on just to the right hand side of the tower. Go. Then I'm adding yellow to that. Lemon, cadmium lemon. To ring the changes and it'll give me a, um, a fresher green in places. Particularly as I go out of picture there. Putting a touch of red with that there, just to give that a sense of depth. Yep. I'm cleaning the brush now and picking up lemon yellow because along the base is quite a nice sort of green area of grasses really. 
and that sits that then very nicely onto the ground and then we start off with this colour for the hedging here in places but then I quickly pick up this very very dark colour because what I've got to do I haven't really got the ideal brush for this but I want to put this that side is not a bit of hedging there shows up the corner of that may even pop that there as well it's like the idea of that and that will show up that bush area there and we're going to paint around the figures at least the top half of the figures anyway the figures are very important in this Just going to put some finishing touches on top to create the illusion of grasses, which is what we've got basically. There, like that. Okay, now I'm going to deal with the tower. Before I do the tower, I'm going to put the cliffs in. It's burnt umber to start with, a little bit of red in there, not a lot needs to be fairly light, it's, it, the, the sun is catching that early in the morning so that comes in there like that hmm, may need to be a little darker than that actually so let's just put some darker touches in particularly under the top there, it can all be tended to later on then as we come forward we add red with that to create that area there of the cliff which all gives interest a bit more red in there I like the idea of that red not sure why but will be darkened later but a bit more brown now there we are just in places try and show notice how I'm painting down which gives the illusion that the cliffs stand up and that's varying the tone and the colour as I go which is more or less as I see it they can all be improved later on now I'm adding blue with that a bit more burnt umber to get some darker touches and that would go right on the edge there and I'm putting them in while it's still damp that way you get soft edges to these cliff tops there we are and that comes down there then there's a little bit comes out there that's it that comes down to there 
and then more burnt umber to finish what will be the tops of the grasses along the bottom here it will be darkened later probably when I get back in the studio that's when it will all be sort of pulled together right now it really is um, the tower I'm going to leave the tower um, there's a few spots of rain so um, I need really to um, uh, assess all this and um, what I'm going to do I'm going to take it back into the studio um, and um, but in the meantime I can have a spot of lunch Well, I've arrived back in the studio and um, got everything set up. Um, I've had about 110 mile round trip. Um, but I do, like always, when you've been out there um, painting and you bring the painting home to finish off in the studio, um, it's always best really uh, to do it there and then. Uh, well, that's the way I feel. Um, and um, I'm getting there um, and I'm gonna show you how to complete this subject here back in my studio well here we go um, got my water got everything set up um, all ready to go in the normal way and uh, right it's the tower let's have a look at the tower shall we well the tower is quite interesting um, it's um, quite a large feature um, but um, quite tall and I've tried to um, depict that. I'm going to use my number six, I think, for this. My number six, um, it's a Rosemary & Co. Series 344. Points well. And uh, right, let's do a little more detailing on the I'm going to use Indian red for this with light red now although I've started putting it in in a light color um, my thinking is that it could be quite silhouette against the dark um, sky so that's pretty much my thinking so I'm putting the buttress areas in let's paint that sort of oval shape at the base of the buttress there right now we can see the buttress areas there they must stand up right get those in not too neat but you know reasonably reasonably neat gaps are not too big it's all a matter of getting the balance of the whole thing. And then there's one right on the end there. There we go. So that more or less picks up that. Then we come down to a surround of almost light red on its own. And that is that top little piece there. Shadow side of it will go in shortly. I'm putting that down there that will show up the lighter area so it goes up across and back so I'm sweeping that in like that and down into that corner just leaving a bead of lighter color on the back and that back edge will have some darker tone It'll be slightly standing out so enlarge on that Slightly darker on that back edge. Now I'm changing to a number, actually, let me use my number eight. 
not one that points, the one that doesn't point, number eight round. And I'm going to put in light red with a touch of Indian red, just to darken. This is going to be the lighter side, but it's going to be quite dark overall. But that is the lighter side there. Okay, and then that comes out of touch and then that goes down to there. Nice bit of warmth to that bricking. And then it goes out even further and runs down to there. I'm painting over the any window areas. It runs right the way down to there. Loosen that up. Yeah, while it's still damp, we we'll drop in some raw sienna here and there. Just to give it a hint of a change of sort of colour really. Doesn't want to be too clean. The old buildings aren't. Right, next one to the Indian red and light red I'm going to add ultramarine blue that'll give me a somewhat darker brick colour like that just leaving a separation between those other areas a little bit more paint, a bit more water. Vary this a little more, little mix as we go. That's the tone that's um, reasonably dark. Certainly darker than the front edge anyway. There we are. And bring that right the way down to the base. I'm going to draw that across the base like that. And then on the dark side, I'm going to use Indian Red with Ultramarine and a lot of Ultramarine gone in there. I want to show up the real dark edge. And that comes straight down like that. I'm using the mill stick. And I'm going to add even more blue to this. Because I want that to stand out quite strong. And then about that point, it stands out a little bit. It doesn't, you know, it just gets slightly thicker as it heads down. A bit more in there, that's it. And it comes out down to there. Then it comes out just a tad again. And that is the back edge of that. So you've got your so like three sides <clears throat> and with this dark colour I'm now going to put just a touch under there, touch under there and a touch under there so that we can see that edging. Okay and I'm then going to put, and I'll use a rigger for that. <clears throat> right so you've got your three sides basically. While that's drying, clean the brush, I'm going to go back to my number six at points, and we've got a greeny grey for that uh, capping on the top, more or less a slate grey really. So I'm using a bit of blue and a bit of red, Prussian and Indian respectively and just putting in a very light wash because there is, I'm not sure what that is but it's a bit of capping right in the centre there. We'll put some shadow on the back edge if that doesn't come up dark enough. There we go. Good. Now I'm just going to clean down that edge some touch of darker stuff 
there just to give a little bit of interest and also down that lighter centre and I will do that there while it's still slightly damp because that should be interesting the effect we get from that it's got to, it's got to look old it's got to look aged that's the key to this and then a bit more blue in there with the red because I want to produce I've got a, a grey plinth around the base like that I did notice so it comes slightly towards you there crossed and back up there we are it's looking quite good quite happy with that right let's have a look at the background I've got a feeling this blue ultramarine and light red needs to be more ultramarine and darker really and that is for the roof there and that comes across there just across the top and down there perfect nice and dark silhouette more or less against the light sky then this roof is part of that then so that comes across and that heads down like that Go. and I'm going to put a roof on here with a chimney which I saw and there is another roof that runs across there it's a little bit higher I was uh, worth putting in and another one here a couple of chimneys there and they will give a lovely backdrop to the chimney itself or to the tower itself right while that's all drying now we're going to give the rocks some attention so i'm going to use burnt umber with a little indian red and a little blue but a bit more burnt umber on this to give me some darker touches because I'm going to do this one first and how do we create the feeling of, of rocks and uneven edging well if you put a line across there like that quite quite uneven trying to give it a bit of unevenness if that's the word then you take another brush which is just lightly damped and you streak it down it, not everywhere just in, in in one or two places here and there while it's still damp so it marries it all together then in that you streak another little area like that another little bit come out there that's quite dark too and then you streak that down and across You can put detail in to this to a certain extent, but not as much in that one because that one is further away. But anyway, and we're always quite dark where we meet this lighter business in the foreground. And what I'm going to do overhangs there there we are show that lovely overhang and this one needs to be put in with a bit more blue in the mix similar way I suppose but that's a bit sheer and overall
uneven at the base again only smaller uneven areas and what I'm going to do with that one I'm going to soften that so it's gone from dark through to light just to give it a bit of a different feel so that's the two overhanging cliff areas right now the detailing is purely the windows really window there it's only three windows basically that's a window somewhat narrow there is one at the back here which probably will need to be light I might even lift that off later um, but that's pretty much all the windows there is some different bricking for a window here that's slightly lighter but that's only because it's been blanked off there there we go look at that and uh, there must have been one here so we're going to put that one in there gently yeah. probably one the other side as well <clears throat> okay burnt umber now with the Indian red not too much Indian red in this this is going to be really blue because I want to show the shadow underneath there across there and down there I want to show the shadows of the buttress areas like that and a little bit of detailing there bit there um, there is some sections here that need to be shown yep now we do have an area there that has some shadow So that needs to be shown in. Whoops, gone offline. There you go. Because that one stands out. That one stands out a little. And that one doesn't stand out too much. And then we have sort of like a section area there, there. Comes back. Up, crossed, back. And then this is obviously darker down that back edge. Whether that's visible or not, I'm not sure. A little bit darker around the base. And particularly down that edge there where that's in complete shadow. Putting that edge in slight shadow as well. nice now I'm using cadmium yellow now because I want to show some variant color that I've got within that bricking and some of that colour is slightly yellow so that's why I'm using the lemon yellow and I'm going to use a bit of red as well a bit of that light, a bit of that cadmium red Put it in first. Then you take a damp brush and you spread it through. Be 
because that needs to be shown on the tower. Now that has, I hope, given it a very aged look. It's been a little bit darker on that top there. They seem to finish a bit early. There. That's it. And we have a shadow coming down side of that capping like that of course we have the old flagpole that's something we mustn't forget that flag itself well that's got the union flag or the Red Cross motif and that will have because it's flapping in the wind it's not just a straight cross and that will be shown when we put in the um, when I come to put in the final uh, touches really final shadows good now we've got the figures well, we're having one that's sort of like a ready sort of colour. Let's put it, make it a bit greeny. That's it. There we are. It's got to be fairly light, not too dark, where it's against the dark background. There. One figure. The other one is going to be quite red. The other figure. And just a little bit of raw sienna for the legs. Look at that. Father and daughter, apparently. Now in front of the tower, I've got to pull the eye towards the tower and, uh, and in effect, helping the sunlight onto the front of the tower. So I'm using a green, just pulling along like that. Let's go across there like that. And then it goes out there. Then I'm going to use just a damp brush to soften that in places. My normal technique. Just in places. All of a sudden it lights up where the figures are. And that really is what we're looking for. A passage to the figures in the lower part. Right, now we put a bit of burnt umber with that. Not too much to start. There, a little bit there. And we have grasses there that stand up. It's an un, sort of an untreated area that uh, doesn't have any. Um, open up the hairs of the brush and texture, a little bit of texture here and there, just to show the tops. Then we'll sweep across. A little bit of texture there. It. 
and on the outer edge there I'm just gonna lose that a little I want to lose the softness of, of all of this textured area it's quite a flat surface but um, I want to remain uh, want to hold on to a bit of texture now a bit of light red in there with a bit of burnt umber because here you've got the odd touch of um, tall grasses that stand up so I'm using dry brush in a textured form and they're just into that damp area and so are those so they'll soften nicely and just gradually get less and less as they go along and then all of a sudden they stand up into there like that and then once you get to that area you just damp again and spread some of that through where they actually sit otherwise they look too tall too tall I think that's the word I want them as tall as that and then all of a sudden we come into another area of these sort of nice sort of grassy bits and there that just takes back a little there then we come into some more into that area there and we lose some texture on the brush and just texture it through like that and out of picture bottom right hand corner a little bit of texture there we can be bolder with these strokes as we come into the foreground and a little darker too I might add so I've added a bit of blue with that and there again damp brush soften a little bit of an area there another little bit of an area there doing it with a small brush that way you're not going to over soften and get too much of a run not too much softening in the foreground and that gives a lovely feel of texture um, gradually running towards the tower itself I'm going to put in some fairly weak ultramarine bit of brown in there as well as a weak grey to show the way this flag turns like that can you see the way we've got to turn now on that flag and underneath because it's in shadow in areas so you've got light and dark to give that shadow effect once it dries it will dry off quite nicely now shadows ultramarine Indian red and to start with I'm going to put in some nice deep dark shadows in to the area behind the tower so I'm introducing some of that into where the tower where it comes down and that's going to go across there and then I'm just using a slight lightly damped brush just to pull that up so it mingles with that and it doesn't get too um, too liney then it comes across like that and that tower will cast quite a shadow across that foreground and a lot depends on whether that foreground is uneven or what sort of texture that foreground what it's laying on 
well eventually it comes out onto the that area there and just pull it away like that but lose it as it goes out of picture yep just want to lift off it's got a bit of a bump there so let's just lift that away before it dries like that there we are. so we've got the tower shadow we then will have shadows from the figures like that and they will be softened as well I always like to have softening under those shadows move that out the way there you go let that roll out the way nice soft shadow underneath that figure seem to work I think my general rule of thumb right now we're going to show some lovely deep shadows here right on that end because that's going to be that and along the base but it's going to go up in places but not everywhere then we're just gonna let's get around for that just soften that in places too there 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 okay so then we come into a lighter area now we have a dark area again from this shadow shadow area and that's going to be quite dark up into that and of course around the figures always nice to have a dark area around the figures down that edge there delicate work really I suppose quite spiky areas there don't lose too much of the coloration there we are and then some darker touches scraped in there reload the brush touch there touch there as that goes out of picture it's all done with the rigger scratching across the surface creating that lovely I'm looking for a silhouette effect really against the sky that's really the idea of this and then we clean the brush and we'll look at the shadow in the foreground well there's lots of clouds about so there's sure to be a sweep of foreground shadow across there and that will then sit on top there like that until we get to about there weaken that pull that across run that right out of picture there we are nice weak fork foreground shadow and that's going to stand up like that look at that isn't it lovely when these shadows go on gives real feeling to the whole scene we even got to put it right there then I'm weakening to spread it through because I want that to go across the foreground but I don't want that to be too prominent in the foreground another little touch just there breaking out into that area there and then weakening again it's all a matter of mood because we've got clouds in the sky 
we can obviously have a moody feel to the um, to the landscape. I'm using point of the brush to get some jagged tops to some of these shadows because they would be because they're got jagged edges like that small little jagged edges there just lose the undersides of those Brilliant. Let's allow that to dry. Well, we're nearly there, really. Just before I take the surround away, I'm going to put in some textured pieces within this shadow area. Just one or two little areas that would denote as, a, as these grasses standing up. One or two little dots and dashes, particularly coming up into lighter areas. Always a useful thing to do. I do that quite a lot in my woodland scenes, as you probably remember. And I just think in the foreground here, it could be worth entering into that sort of realm of foreground grasses. More in the foreground there. Um, not as many as you go away. Don't overload the brush for this. Just just about, it's a rigger, it's only just about damp. That way you don't drop in lots of uh, colour where you don't need it really. You don't want blobs of colour, you want texture. So just lightly load the brush. First blob may be a bit heavy but after that you should and we don't want to overdo this either because we don't want to overload this this foreground area Put a little touches there a bit more brown a bit more red in there bit more right in that corner but one or two little touches here and there more in the center to be very careful here we don't over load things and then of course we run away then here where there may be some small little areas and if you get a blob that you don't want just just put your finger across it level it off like that there we go a little blob there and then just level off the underneath it's all I mean what they are I can't really tell you but they're indi mark indications of grasses and uh, I normally find they give that required foreground texture and now some red because I know there's quite a, now let's just make certain we've not got too much on the brush I'm using the side of the brush now with some red on there cad red texture and I think I'm in danger of overdoing that so let's um, take off the surround and see where we are well I've just pulled away a little there so I can just show you the complete picture um, uh, with the um, 
surround take it away and finally just needs signing which I'm going to do in this bottom right hand corner there in the paint that I've used which is my normal way of doing things um, and we may as well just a couple of birds will be required I think I just feel that they would go there skulls obviously being out to sea um, would be the obvious reason for these birds I'm just putting a bigger one there and I think that completes the picture itself well there's the completed painting uh, surround away um, I think nice comp composition overall nice deep dark sky um, tower in the center which draws the eye into the picture um, coupled with the foreground grasses um, pretty pleased with that one uh, so that's my day today here in um, Essex it's just about um, dinner time I think so I hope you've enjoyed that video um, if you have and you've not already done so please subscribe click in the link bottom right hand corner and uh, you will receive noti notifications when I upload more videos and also um, I'll be able to interact with you if you like to ask me anything um, on the uh, comments uh, part section of this uh, uh, channel. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. See you all again very, very soon. Bye.